Alawi marhab or hello, how we doing today? Today's video is going to be about the real bad guys of 40k. I know that there's no good guys per se, but I definitely want to talk about the old ones and how just about everything that's happened in 40k is their fault. Essentially, if the old ones and the Tyranids are one and the same, or if the Tyranids are a creation of the old ones, or if they just work together. But before we get into the theories, I want to go over some concrete lore just to give you guys some actual ideas of where this is coming from before we get into the schizo ramblings. Starting off with how and why the Tyranids even noticed the Milky Way to begin with. The long and the short of it is that Alexis Pollux and Barabas Dantioch were on the planet of Sotha where there was a Necron beacon that was being powered by a Catan shard. The Pharaoh's beacons are all kind of connected to one big hyperlane network, but that's neither here nor there. There's this really big misconception in the Warhammer community that the Pharaoh's beacon actually exploded, but this isn't actually the case. Because you see, each and every one one of those nodes, I guess is the best way to put it, in that hyperlane fast travel network that the Pharos Beacon is connected to, is actually powered by a Catan shard. There are eight different shards of a god that power this device. While there was a massive war raging across Sotha, Barabas Dantioch was just smashing his hat on the keyboard, hoping that something would eventually happen, and eventually it did. One thing led to another, the computer overheats, and there's a burst of quantum energy that just shoots out into the vacuum of space in all directions. Which, realistically, is just a cheeky way for GW to get around the whole speed of light thing, since it should have realistically taken between a century to a few millennia to even reach wherever the Tyranids actually were in void space. I wanted to bring this up specifically because the Tyranids being attracted to the light of the Pharaoh's Beacon really didn't make a lot of sense to me at first. Not only because of the sheer quantity of nukes that are used in the 40k setting on a daily basis, but also the fact that they were produced in an age of technology that is so far advanced advanced and forgotten that we have to just assume that they were exponentially more powerful. I know it's pedantic, but I just wanted to mention it because at least one of those super nukes should have realistically attracted the nits. And as the lore has progressed, we've gotten more and more info on the Tyranids and their origins. According to the mainstream Imperial records, the first Tyrannic War was the first real encounter with the Tyranids, but that's not exactly true. I made a video on High Fleet Tiamat if you want to check that out, but they are technically the first known high fleet in our galaxy, having been discovered sometime around M35. But this is also a lie. We actually encountered the Tyranids during the Great Crusade. An expedition fleet led by the Emperor himself set out to destroy what was called the Legion of Ouroboros or Ouroboros in the Helican subsector, which is in the relative galactic far north. Keep in mind, this is a couple thousand years before Barabas Dantioch had the incident with the Pharaoh Speakin, and probably about 12,000 years before the actual First Tyrannic War. This is probably the single most important piece of lore on the Tyranids' origins because there's really only two possible answers for why they attacked from this direction. Either this was the first attempted Tyrannic Wars, quote unquote, and the Tyranid organism as a whole was coming from the Galactic North. That or the Tyranids had already just eaten their way through the galaxy and that tiny high fleet was working its way north. This means that the Tyranids fought humanity, and technically the strongest human ever, at their peak, at their zenith. And on an unrelated note, that might be why the Emperor was rushing to get the Crusade done so fast, since he actually fought the Tyranids, and he probably came in contact with the hive mind. But all of that was just for timekeeping or chronology's sake, now let's get into the theories. Starting with the best and probably the closest to home theory, we have the Scientist Simulation Theory, as I like to call it. Now, it's really hard to pin any other trope to the Old Ones aside from that of the apathetic god, or the god who's just been around for so long that they don't care anymore, they are so indifferent. Kind of like how the Emperor of Man views, you know, the average human life. Now, buckle your seatbelt. Maybe the Old Ones created the Tyranids to act as their slate cleaner or the equivalent of wiping the simulation. This would be something like the Truman Show or the Simulation Hypothesis. Maybe the Zoo Hypothesis if you're familiar with the Fermi Paradox. Basically, the Old Ones have been running countless simulations and any time a galaxy gets to be too big for their britches or too much of a problem, they just call in the bugs to wipe that galaxy out. Maybe they are a species of, you know, sociopathic scientists who are just trying to make the perfect utopia. Which is kind of beautiful because there's no clearer way of saying the road to hell is paved with good intentions. 
And you could take the moral argument that, yeah, they are killing, a, you know, an entire galaxy's worth of life, but all of that life is being recycled by an organism. Technically, they're not destroying life, they're just converting that life into a single organism. There isn't really any evidence for this whatsoever. It really just goes off from the Swarm Lord using a material in their weapon that is not found in the Milky Way. And my preferred interpretation of this is that they already wiped this galaxy out. Maybe this galaxy in particular is just the Old Ones testing grounds for their, you know, utopia simulation. And alternatively, if the Old Ones didn't make the Tyranids, or the Tyranids aren't a tailor-made tool created by the Old Ones to clear out the experiment, that also doesn't mean that they can't just follow the Tyranids, because if you follow the Tyranids, there's going to be a whole bunch of free real estate. If you are looking at it from the perspective of the Old Ones are these Wardens or these Protectors, then it makes sense why they were trying to turn the Milky Way into a galaxy-sized fortress. We know that they arrived in our galaxy 65 or 66 million years ago. Now, if you're a race of super advanced psychic frogs that has the time and the drive to seed or uplift an entire galaxy, which keep in mind is some 100,000 light years across, containing some trillion stars, not to mention having the means and the motivations to create a FTL network that spans across the entire galaxy like a spider web, which conveniently that's what it's called, the webway, and to put the cherry on top, they also don't like anything that they didn't create themselves. We're going around creating or uplifting species, and each one of these species was given different abilities. Some of these include the Eldar, who were given super psychic abilities, super emotions, and super long lives, the Krork, who were just non-stop fighting mushrooms, the Slon, who were just diet old ones with, you know, super advanced psychic abilities, and then the Jokero, who are just tech chimpanzees. Not only that, but every single species that the Old Ones even messed with in the slightest bit had some level of latent psychic abilities. Which leads me to the conclusion that the Old Ones are basically the equivalent of a sociopathic scientist, or the mad genius, the supervillain, whatever you want to think of. That is the Old Ones. And it appears that the Eldar are their chosen inheritors of the Milky Way. Maybe you could say it was the Slon, but I'm not convinced. Add to that the fact that the Tyranids are the perfect way to ensure that your failure either isn't replicated or isn't a failure to begin with. Because even though the organisms that you made didn't perform the tasks that you wanted in the way that they wanted or they weren't as efficient, that genetic information is still stored within a basically extragalactic gene bank. The Tyranids would be essentially just the galaxy or universal sperm bank. Which, let's be honest, what is more grimdark than the universe's largest sperm bank? The progeny of the old ones would essentially live in the webway, and they would use the webway to go out, grab resources, and then come back. I know that sounds a little far-fetched, but the only other option is that it's the Catan that the old ones were worried about, even though the Catan had already lost to multiple wars to the old ones. Maybe the old ones created this universe and were turning it into a bastion or fortress to defend against the Tyranids. Now, this theory doesn't really invalidate the Tyranids previously eating the Milky Way, because the Old Ones could have come to this galaxy, seen that the Tyranids ate everything, and then decided they weren't going to allow it to happen again. This explains why the Webway was created, which is its own independent dimension, which acts as an FTL network. You could realistically hide an entire species in there. For reference, you've got the Drukari and Kamara or Kamora. All of this is going off from a lot of assumptions, though, and I'm realistically just trying to play devil's advocate, because I spent six minutes shitting on the old ones, I think it's only fair that I give them some benefit of the doubt, even if it's minimal. It still doesn't excuse the old ones not helping the Necron tier, but it at least makes sense why they were so preoccupied with creating the webway and creating and uplifting all of these other species. There just isn't an excuse for how the old ones handled the the Necron tier, though. I really cannot imagine that it would have taken more effort to fix the Necron tier than it did to create the webway. Hell, they didn't even need to fix the entire species. If they fixed 10% of the species, they could have waited 70 years and the rest of the population would have just died off. Realistically, two hours worth of work from a single old one costed the entire group of old ones that were in the Milky Way to just get wiped out. And we're going to end it off with the most boring and realistically the biggest ripoff of another series, physically possible. 
Now that is the best case scenario theory, that the old ones either encountered the Tyranids or they had previously created the Tyranids and this was their attempt to either rectify it or fix it. But now that they've been given the benefit of the doubt, I am now going to shit on them thoroughly. I don't think the old ones are good guys. I personally, in my headcanon, believe that the Tyranids are the way for the old ones to essentially wipe the slate. They build a galaxy and if it's not to their, I guess, specifications, they send in the Tyranids, the Tyranids eat everything, and they can start over again. Or, if you want to just call it the Halo approach, you could say that the Tyranids are just an old one or the old ones broken up and corrupted. But, again, that is just blatantly stealing from Halo. I mean, yeah, it's a really, really fun theory to think that after the birth of Slanesh and after the initial tampering with humanity, that the old one just said, eh, screw it, and became molecular dust. The trope of angry god is realistically just as interesting as the trope of apathetic god. I'm gonna call this the flood theory or the precursor theory because that's realistically all it is. During the birth of Slanesh or after the birth of Slanesh, the last old one was essentially broken up and maybe they were broken up into molecular dust like the flood. Alternatively, it could have just turned them feral or, you know, de-evolved them by a few billion or billion years. Either way, yes, the old ones did everything wrong. So real quick, let's go over some of the similarities between the Tyranids and the old ones. Both are extremely potent psychers that are extragalactic in nature. Add to that, both groups really hate chaos in anything not organic. And if you want to go with a little bit more of a metaphorical approach, the Tyranids really are life shapers or life creators. Even though it's not the pretty definition that everyone's used to, creating tailored life specifically for a single combat form or combat need is creating life, and it's arguably just as valid as the old ones creating the Jokero to make technology. There's also the possibility that the Tyranids are just a universal constant. At this point, they have expanded so far and so aggressively that they are essentially in more places than not. It's easier to say where the Tyranids haven't been than where they have. But I think we can all agree at this point, and considering all the lore that we know about the Tyranids, that they for sure already consume this galaxy. Why else would they have set up in the Helican subsector? Why else would they have set up in Tiamat if they didn't already either consume this galaxy or were planning on consuming it? But the evidence actually supports the Tyranids already eating this galaxy, or consuming it technically. Because the Swarm Lord uses a material in its bioweapons that is not found naturally in this galaxy. Now, why would it not be found in this galaxy, and why were the Tyranids in this galaxy before the first Tyrannic Wars, if they aren't related? The only other explanation is that some other super race came by and harvested all of this either some millions and millions of years ago, or billions of years ago, well before the old ones. But this is extremely unlikely, because that would mean millions and millions of years would have passed, and not a single, you know, satellite galaxy or passing galaxy would lose a single comet, a single asteroid. It had to have been fairly recently. And as weird as it sounds, 66 million years on an astrological timescale is basically nothing. To any species or group of species that is able to cross the vast distances of empty space between galaxies, time is not really an obstacle to them. So for the old ones, waiting a couple hundred thousand years or even a couple million years while the Tyranids slowly and meticulously pick apart every single piece of useful material in a galaxy, it makes sense. If you want to be seen as a benevolent or beneficent god, you cannot let your creations or your progeny know of your past failures or your past creations. Because let's think of this from a psychological perspective. Say you are the Eldar species and the old ones come to you and they say you are attempt number 55,476. You are not going to feel important. But if the old ones create the Eldar and you are, oh, you are our first creation, you are perfect, you are created in our image. But now I guess it's time for you to decide. Do you think that the Old Ones are this apathetic god species who is just trying to create the perfect galaxy or the perfect species? Or do you think that they are just trying to fix the mistakes of their past, even though they're probably never going to be able to? I'm going to say that they are just apathetic sociopaths who are trying to create a utopia that doesn't exist. But again, tell me your thoughts down below. And anyway, have a nice day.